Welcome to Fun and Games Side Quests. Every episode is a different host sharing a video game they love and why they love it. Hi there, I'm Case Aiken, and I am the host of Another Pass and Men of Steel on the Certain POV Network. I'm also the Dungeon Master for our network-wide Star Wars role-playing game, Scruffy Nerf Herders. Uh, and today I wanted to take a break from talking about movies or Star Wars or, or Superman. And uh, instead, I wanted to talk about a video game that I really love and spend a lot of time on. Um, I want to talk about Mark of the Ninja, which I played on Xbox 360, uh, which is a thing I still play. Uh, but since then, it's come out on plenty of platforms, um, Steam for Microsoft and, and for uh, Mac OS. Uh, but apparently it's also come out since for Nintendo Switch, PS4, Xbox One. So you can you can play it. Um, and Mark of the Ninja, which is a game developed by Clay Entertainment, uh, it came out in 2012 uh, and it is a side scrolling stealth ninja game. And that is rare for ninja games like we, we all know and, and love classic games like Ninja Game or Shinobi or, uh, you know, the, the myriad ninja games that came out for the Nintendo because I was part of that wave. Um, but this game is not that this game is not a run and slash kind of game. In fact, the game highly encourages you not to do that. Uh, it is a stealth game and it is a stealth game that does it very well. Uh, the beauty of doing it in a 2D environment like the games of your, but the art style is, is a very nice updated look that um, would fit quite well with, you know, many cartoons in terms of the animation quality. But the, the benefit of doing a side scrolling stealth game is you get a lot of information and the way they distribute that information to you is very clever. So the, the whole game is built around having like a fog of war effect. So whichever way you're looking, you can see more clearly. You lose sight of details and movement if you're not looking at a thing or if you're on the wrong level. But you do get things like they they visually represent sound waves for any footfall or for any gunfire or anything like that, at, like as a visual effect for it all. And, and the game is is really interesting in that regard. It's very soothing to play. It's it's complicated. There's uh, every button on the Xbox 360 controller is in use for something different. There's no uh, there's no redundant functions on here. There's probably no simplifying it without having like a much more elaborate drop down menu. What you could do in this game, it isn't really emphasizing tons of speed, even though there are sections where it really is to your benefit to move quickly. Um, but it's the kind of game that it just they give you a lot of tools and it, for you to like navigate these very complex areas. When I first played it, I was like, hey, this actually could be the, the perfect engine for a 2D Spider-Man game because you get swinging, you get um, you get a, a sense effect. It's kind of like a spider sense uh, and you get some other supernatural powers. And but you're not particularly lethal. You have darts that don't kill people. They just distract them. Uh, you you can kill a person if you get a, a sneak attack in. But even. That isn't necessarily the best way to play it. Like your your main goal is to be stealthy and to be avoided. Um, and, and as you go, you get new tools. Like I mentioned, you get some supernatural powers over it because of the system in the game of you getting tattoos that act as your upgrades. And in addition to that, they give you costumes that will have different effects that you can unlock, such as ones where you uh, don't kill people, like where you don't carry a weapon and you can't do that. So it very much encourages you to, to not go the lethal route, to not like try to steamroll your way through a level, but to take it slowly, quietly, stealthily. Um, you can pretty much explore everything. You can cling to walls. You can fit through most crevices. Eventually you get a way to make bigger leaps so that you can see everything that's around you. It's a very cool game. Um, and they sort of give a, a fairly basic, uh, it's a fun plot, but it's not the more, that's not the reason you're playing this game. The reason you're playing this game is because it is so much fun to play. Like it is so much fun that once you realize how much stuff you unlock as you play, you'll go back and do the game, uh, in a non-lethal way or, uh, never causing an alarm or, you know, it, it, it is very rewarding and has a lot of replay value in, in that it has a really good design that you feel like you want to do in addition to unlockables. Um, like you, you don't feel hampered by not having unlocked stuff at the beginning, but you definitely feel uh, rewarded once you, you get those things. But the, the story is pretty basic. You're part of a ninja clan. It's kind of the modern setting. It's not very explicit. There's sci fi stuff going on. Like eventually you fight like guards with like lasers and there's, you know, like all kinds of traps that are motion detected or what have you. And, you know, eventually cyborgs ninjas. Obviously, you're going to have cyborgs if it's <laughs> if it's not a feudal setting, uh, because that's how pop culture works. But it's it's a really fun 
game where you are playing as the the lone survivor of your ninja clan who first is trying to figure out what happened and then um, is on the run for a bit. And there's some twists in there. And in fact, the in twist is really good. Like the uh, it really recontextualizes a lot of your experience of playing the game. Uh, but just like I said, just playing this game is is the reward unto itself. Like the, the story is there and it's good, but it's not particularly novel and nor is it going to be the thing that you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe. Let me tell you about the story. It's just that this game is such a, a fun gameplay loop for you as you play it. Like, again, every finger's engaged in the controller. It's a <laughs> a game with wonderful set design with uh, lighting design that is just unparalleled. Like, seriously, there's a hard mode where shadows become even more important and uh, where your hiding systems are way way more emphasized because you just you're just you can't beat up everyone <laughs> it just won't happen um, and the the way that they create graphical representations of sensations that you're experiencing in the name of stealth in this very cartoony like it looks like a like batman the animated series um like the cartoon style is is very much there it's not attempting to be realistic but it does such a great job of having these representations of abstractions it's uh, like I said, it's a it's a really good game and just is very fun at, and gives you a different version of that sort of stealth itch like a stealth game. When you get through an area without getting caught, that's the best feeling. That's that's why you play a game like that. That's why, like the first level of Hitman 2 is still talked about, because there's so many ways you can do it. And some of them are completely uh, nonviolent, minus the actual like assassination. This game has that like you feel really good when you figure out how to like get through an area without triggering any alarms. There are very complex uh, boss challenges that aren't like fight the bad guy. They're like, how do you move around while you're being constantly spotted by things that can kill you very quickly? Um, and and they, they get really cool. Like, again, you get a lot of information. You have a very clear layout of where you are once you've explored it. Like once once you've seen an area, you don't lose the details of like, oh, the platform is there. You just don't see who is in that space. So they can give you missions that require you to have very clear memorization in quotes of what a location looks like. Uh, but because you're playing a 2d game, you actually get to see it and it isn't uh, penalizing. Like some, some games kind of assume that you actually do have perfect memory as if you were there and also had perfect memory and they can be very difficult in the 3d environment because you just can't see everything as you would want to. And this game does not have that problem. Uh, it, it removes that dimension being a, a two dimensional space to really ramp up the complexity of the environment you're in uh, and not have to waste time being like, yes, but like there's stuff to the immediate left and right of you all the time. So no, no, it's very important that like this is your this is your space. This is your playground and uh, go have fun. And that is like just such a, a breath of fresh air of a video game. Like I, I can't emphasize enough how much fun I had with this game. And I really think you should check it out. Like I said, it's on Switch now, PS4, Xbox One and Steam. So like if you have a means of playing video games, you have a means of playing this video game. And I got to tell you, it's a lot of fun and a really cool time and just different than a lot of the games that are out there. Like it is a 2D ninja game, which is like the bedrock of video game design. But it is different in a way that is very satisfying. It just feels like a very mature take on a very foundational component of video game genre. Uh, and th as a result, they have a work that's really solid and, and really impressive. And, you know, the only thing they needed to do for the remastering was put all the DLC and up the resolution of the images. Like it's a fantastic game that has like a really nice art style that holds up regardless. And just, just go check it out. It's, it's a ton of fun. Um, and then you know, after that, or if you need something to listen to while you're playing, uh, just check out certain POV.com. We've got a bunch of shows and I host three of them. Another Pass, which is a movie analysis show. Men of Steel, which is a Superman appreciation show. And the Scruffy Nerf Herders, which is our Star Wars D&D game. Uh, so those are all over at certain POV.com. You can also find a link to our Discord server there. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We're we're having a great time building this community. So so come hang out. Talk to me about Mark of the Ninja on our Discord again. I'm Case Aiken, and happy gaming. Hey. Oh, hey, Jeff. What's going on, guys? Oh, you know, talking about Superman. Oh, cool. I could talk about Superman. I could talk some more about Superman. We know. I'll bet a few people would want to get in on this. I'm down. You know it. 
That sounds like fun. I'll do it. Cool. Let's do it. We can call the show Men of Steel. And you can find it at certainpov.com. Or wherever you get your podcasts. Yay. CPOV. Certainpov.com.